Nuts versus olive oil, the Mediterranean diet. It's been studied. You know what they found, surprising to our imagination, is that when they gave people olive oil to take home with them, they probably ate less butter and less other foods, and it lowered heart attack rates by about 10%. That's good. Olive oil lowers heart attack risk, but not anything like nuts do. When they gave those people nuts instead of olive oil, it dropped heart attack rates by 60%. We don't buy a car by comparing it to a junkyard wreck. And just because oil is better than butter doesn't make it good for us. We can make anything look good by what we compare, compare it against. Eggs look real healthy compared to donuts, but not compared to beans. That's what you compare. Do a study comparing eggs to beans, see what the outcome is. But they don't do those studies. They compare eggs to meat, so they can make eggs look good or not look so bad. Same thing with olive oil. The biggest scam ever perpetrated on the, Ameri on the world's population is they actually convinced the whole population of the world to think olive oil is health food. Not health food. It's the seeds that are, it's the nuts, it's the walnuts that are the healthy fat, not the oil, not the refined oil. Here's some examples. Going to some examples. Here's Martin. At age 66, he was 266 pounds and near death. He had heart failure, peripheral edema, cardiac arrhythmia. Right? He was atrial fibrillation, high blood pressure, on 11 different medications with a heart valve problem. He required urgent surgery. He weighed 266 pounds with a 51 atrial. He was near death. Now at age 70, he's lost 120 pounds. He weighs 146, no medications, normal heart rhythm, normal blood pressure, no edema, no breathing issues. He made a total recovery, no valve problems, no heart problems, no atrial fibrillation. He's well again, and you know what his, you know what his business is now? He, were, he became a Mayo Clinic certified health counselor. He went into the, went into the health professions now. And he's an example of great health. From near death and not only leaving the hospital alive, now he's an example of shining good health. It's what we see over and over again. Here's John, John Pelikowski, he's the guy on the right. Who's supposed to laugh on that one? That picture was taken like 25 years ago. I don't look much different except my shirt's more baggy. But anyway, back in 1994, John had triple vessel disease and his cardiologist told him he needed urgent angioplasty and stent placement. And I hadn't written books back then, but I convinced him in some way, I managed to convince him not to listen to his cardiologist. And I said to him, John, just give me three months and you'll go back to your cardiologist after three months of doing this program. And I'll show you that the, the stress test can improve and the cardiologist will see such an improvement in your condition that he won't want to do the surgery and put the stent in. Once you put that stent in, you can't take it out again. Amazing that I even convinced him to do it. And he went back to the cardiologist three months later and the cardiologist gave him another stress test and said, I've never seen this before happen. I can't believe it happened. How much better you got in three months. You don't need a surgery anymore. Of course he never saw it happen before. He never advised people to change their diet appropriately. Cardiologists don't see what happens, don't have any knowledge about nutritional interventions. They're completely in the dark. In most cases, they're advising people to avoid nutritional interventions. It reminds me of just this last year, there was a doctor in Nashville, Daryl, a super nice guy, a physician, who had a heart attack in the hospital, and because he had 17 blockages in his heart, they wanted to do bypass surgery on him. So his sister-in-law, who's a doctor, called, had him call me on the phone, and I went over his case on the phone, and I said, you know, your, your heart, you, don't, you have a lot of heart function, your ejection fraction is normal, you had a small heart attack, what you should do is not do cardiac, not do bypass surgery, you should come to me and stay with me for a few months, drop 50 pounds, open up your heart, get back in good shape again, and you'll not have a, a damaged heart. You have a good, he came, I couldn't believe it, he did it, he came. And you know where he is today? Dead. No, just kidding. <laughs> that was a joke. I just spoke to him. I just spoke to him like a week ago. He's lost, he left my facility having lost about 35 pounds. He continued to lose weight, about 10 pounds a month for the rest of his gone home. He's lost 70 pounds. Man, it's been a five months. He's dropped 70 pounds. He took a picture of himself like on a lounge chair in Tahiti or something. He's, he's go, climbing mountains. He's, going, he's, he's having the time of his life. 
He's in great health. He's slim. He lost weight. Just like John here, John Pelikowski. And now it's, now what is that, 25 years later, he's 98 years old. I can't even get these people to die. <laughs> he went back to his cardiologist, but what, what I'm showing you here with this case is that he didn't get older and see problems get worse. He got older and problems got better. His blood pressure continued to go down as he got older. It's the time you spend doing the right things. What I'm showing you right now, it's not aging that causes heart disease. It's the time you spend eating wrong. We're talking here about salt years and pack years. You know, you know what I mean by pack years and salt years? You know what I'm talking about here? No? The pack years are how many year, packs you smoke to how many years, determining your risk of lung cancer. You know, you smoke three packs a, a day for 30 years, that's 90 pack year hit danger. The salt years are the same thing. You have a high salt diet of 3,000 milligrams of salt a day. That's 2,000 above the 1,000, the which is acceptable. That's two, pack, two salt years. You do that for 30 years, that's 60 salt years. You do 4,000 milligrams of sodium a day, that's three, that's three salt years times 20 years. That's three times 20, that's 60. You getting what I'm saying right now? Your risk of having a hemorrhagic stroke or damage is related to the extent that you how, how bad or how wrong you do things and how many years you proceed to incur those bad habits continued over and over and over again. And the more years you stand, the sooner you stop, and the years that build up without those risks, eventually your body can reverse the damage slowly and gradually and get you back healthy again. If you smoke two packs a day for 30 years at 60 pack years, after 15 years of being off cigarettes completely, your risk of lung cancer almost goes down to a person who never smoked if you're 15 years out of those 60 pack years. If you have 60 salt years and you're off salt for 15 years, your risk of having a stroke goes down to almost a person who never had salt in their diet if you go enough years doing it right. When do you start that? After you have heart failure or now? When do you quit smoking? When you have lung cancer? But what does the American cardiology say? The American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association say? They say, Wait till you have heart disease, and then cut down your salt to 1,500 milligrams a day. That's really bright. First of all, the studies show that when you go from 1,500 to 1,000, you still get extra benefits. And why wait till you have damage occur to cut it out anyway? That's the stupidest idea. And people are saying to me, I'm getting up on a tangent, they're always saying to me, why don't doctors know more about nutrition? And my response to them is, who cares if doctors know more about nutrition? The time you go to a doctor, it's too late anyway. You don't wait to have something wrong with you and then fix your nutrition. You don't expect a doctor to tell you what to fix your nutrition. You should know what to do before you get to the doctor. It's not the doctor's role to do that. It's your role to do it, right? From, you should be learning this in elementary school, in grade school, in high school. You shouldn't be waiting for doctors to teach you. Here's Michael D. Marilek. Wow, Michael, he was really heavy. This is confusing. He was admitted in 2015 with heart failure, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, with an ejection fraction of 20%. I mean, his heart was hardly even pumping out anything. He had an uncontrollable rapid heart, heart rate. He showed a high troponin level suggestive of a heart attack. He could hardly breathe. He had multiple codes in the hospital where he almost died. After a failed attempt to bring his heart under control, the doctors thought he couldn't leave the hospital alive. The nurses was crying. He was dying in the hospital. And incredibly, he got permission from the cardiovascular staff to allow the, to bring a nutritarian diet into the hospital to possibly save him. Incredible. Never seen that before. So the doctors who had failed attempt to save this guy looked at the, the acceptability of using my approach to possibly save his life. And what do you think happened? He died, right? No. I have stupid jokes. It's okay because laughing at stupid jokes also make you live longer. The joke doesn't have to be good, just laugh anyway. It makes you live longer. So he obtained permission to follow this diet in the hospital. And his diabetes was brought into control. He came off his insulin in the hospital. After a few months, he left the, ho he left the hospital. He was no longer diabetic. His blood pressure came back to normal. Eventually, 
His diabetic retinopathy, his vision came back to normal. He didn't need eye surgery anymore. His blood pressure came back to normal. His ejection fraction came back to normal. His heart remodeled. He didn't have a cardiomyopathy anymore. His heart shrunk. And he became a normal guy. Three years later, he's on no medication with no high blood pressure, no glycoma, no high entry of ocular pressure, no diabetic retinopathy, and nothing's wrong with him anymore. At I'm not saying wait till death. You don't have to wait to death to get this to happen, you know, right? These people are almost waiting to death to change their diet. It still works.